Welcome back, Photo Tuts. We're here with another Adobe Camera Raw lesson, and uh, we're going to do one that's actually pretty exciting today. Um, this is one of the tools in Adobe Camera Raw that uh, as you get more comfortable with using it, you're really going to like it. And we're talking here about the adjustment brush. Now, in our lesson so far, we've been kind of sticking to the right side of the uh, tabs here. So we've been looking at uh, our basic adjustments and our tone curves and our details and such. We're going to take a little bit of a deviation from that today. And we're going to look at one of the tools that's up here along the top toolbar, as mentioned, and that is the adjustment brush. Now, for those that are familiar with uh, Photoshop and, uh, and their brushes and whatnot, uh, you'll probably be very familiar uh, with the adjustment brush. But even if you're not familiar with Photoshop and uh, you never use Photoshop or it, or it scares the life out of you, you're going to love the adjustment brush. Uh, it's it's really dead simple to use. Um, anybody can use it, and the stuff that you can do with it is quite amazing. Now, the best thing about the adjustment brush, other than all the stuff you can do with it, is as with many things in Adobe Camera Raw, it's uh, non-destructive, which means is that if if you do something on your picture and it looks horrible, you haven't destroyed your picture. You can easily uh, undo it or edit it or get rid of it completely. Whatever you need to do, it's not going to uh, to destroy your picture. So let's get into the adjustment brush and and, uh, and see exactly what it does. We just brought off kind of a blank canvas here, get an idea of uh, of what this is going to do. Now, when you open the adjustment brush, you get all of these type of things on on the side here. So the things that we can change with the adjustment brush is exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, clarity, sharpness, and even color. Now you'll remember when we were back uh, looking in the basics panel, um, a lot of these are also found in the basics panel, exposure and brightness and contrast, clarity and saturation. So you can do a lot of these things uh, in this panel with the adjustment brush, but you're only doing it in a select location. Um, only what you're painting on is going to have these edits done to it. Whereas in the basic adjustments we remember is when we made a, a change to the exposure or the contrast, it did it in the overall picture. The whole picture was affected by it. So this allows us to be very precise in some of the adjustments that we're doing. So uh, in this part uh, one of the series for the adjustment brush, we're just going to look at exposure. And as we go through it, we'll look at some of the fun things you can do uh, with some of these other uh, features as well. So when you get the adjustment brush open, you'll, you'll find here is uh, a, what looks like a circle uh, and kind of a dashed line around the circle. And, and at first glance, it can be a little confusing exactly what's going on. But what this is, is kind of a graphical representation of, of the brush itself. So what's going to happen, you'll see as we increase here in the slider for size, the size of the brush increases, gets bigger. I mean, that only makes sense. Now the feather is actually going to be, um, the outside of the brush. So when you have, let me increase the size for some reason, my it's flashing on me here. Maybe it's telling me way too big. I'll delete this uh, there so we can go back there. Here you can see it a little bit better on the gray. So the feather is the outside of the brush or, or as the center is the full quality of the brush or this gives you your 100% of your detail or the amount of the brush, the outside feather is as it gradually tapers off as it gets to the end. So that the bigger the feather is, the, the more it's going to gradually taper off at the end. So what you can do is you can either adjust the size here with the slide sli size slider or you can use the feather slider as well. Let me just increase and decrease the feather. So as we decrease the feather, you'll notice the inside is getting bigger, getting closer to the outside there. And so your feather is going to be less. Another thing we can do as well is you can use some shortcut keys. The square brackets on your keyboard will increase and decrease the size of the actual brush. So that'll get bigger or smaller depending on, on your size. And the shift button and the same square brackets, that'll increase and decrease uh, the size of your feather. So you can use those as, as hotkeys as you can see that the uh, feather is getting bigger and smaller as we do that. Or you can just use the slider keys uh, if you prefer that as well. So let's see exactly what's happening. And we'll look at this flow and this density uh, setting as well. So we have our, our blank sheet here. So what happens when, of course, you paint over and, and notice here we're just using exposure settings. Let's actually set this to exposure one. And what happens is as you paint, the exposure goes up. Now, in this case, 
you can't really see it because the reason is our flow is really low. And what flow basically does is this kind of, think of it sort of like an airbrush or something similar, a spray paint can or whatnot. The flow really dictates how much is coming out uh, as you go over on each pass. Um, so the higher the flow, the more is going to be coming out as you go over. So as you see now, a little bit more if we increase of our flow to, actually let's increase our density to 100% as well. Now we're going to see, here we have 100% flow at one exposure. What you can do as well as you're familiar again with Photoshop and you don't like what you've just done, Control Z on your keyboard also undoes, undoes the last uh, the last thing you've done. Or if you don't like it, you can click on these little pins here, which will show you what you've done. And you can also click delete and that gets rid of it as well. We'll see that a little bit more later. So flow, as mentioned, really dictates how much is coming out at each pass. So what you can do then is you can build up uh, your exposure in this case with each successive pass. So let's give it a little bit of more feather and let's give it a little bit of flow. And we'll see here our first pass, it's, it's light. Now we're getting lighter, lighter in each pass. We're building up our flow density. Now, if we brought back our flow really low, we can see this is even a gradual setting. So you see, you hardly see it. And now it's coming in as each successive pass builds up on each other until it gets to that high density. So that is the flow. Now the density uh, actually in a nutshell kind of tells us how much opacity there is in the stroke. I like to think of it as the maximum cap that you put on uh, on your uh, amounts uh, and your flow. So for example, if we put it at 48, that means that we're never going to get darker no matter how much we paint back and forth and back and forth than that 48 density. If we increase that to a higher number, 95, you're going to see okay, we're going to actually get more and more dense. So I think it is, think of it as a cap. It's like, I want to go this dense and I want to go no further. Uh, so you want to set density is if you're working in areas where you make sure it's like, okay, I, I might hit some spots more than I really want to. So I want to make sure that no matter what I do, my density is never going to go above a certain amount um, as I do it. So density is nice. Flow again uh, tells you how much is coming out on each pass and density is the cap it caps it off at uh, a certain amount. So let's delete that over there. So you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing here, at least in the exposure rate. Nice thing there, as you see, is if you hover over these pins, um, it gives you a mask and it shows you exactly where you've gone. So sometimes it's hard when that's off and say, okay, have I have I gone over there and done any work on that side there? Well, you can turn on your, your mask here by hovering over that pin and it'll show you exactly what you've done. So let's just delete that out of there. So let's bring up some actual practical usage for the uh, adjustment brush here in a photograph. And we're going to see how we can use that uh, in particular the exposure in uh, in this particular photograph. Now I'm going to set my exposure to fairly high. Let's do 1.5 or so. And we're going to zoom in here to the actual eyes. So let's bring it up here so we have a nice close look here. And let's bring that down. So this this photos lit pretty well, but say you wanted to do a bit more of adjustments and you say there's a little bit of shadow here under the eyes and I want to get rid of that. And I want to bring out uh, a little bit more brightness into it. Well, this is where your, your adjustment brush really comes in handy. So let's bring up our adjustment brush again. Now we see, okay, our brush is a little too large uh, for what we're working on here. So let's bring it down in size. Okay. That's good there. Maybe let's increase uh, the feather again. That's uh, with the shift and the bracket keys on the keyboard. And we have our exposure set to one and a half stops here. So let's just, let's see, how's our flow? That's maybe too long and our density is at zero. So we want to bring up our density here. Uh, maybe not that much. So let's bring a really low flow and we'll kind of build up uh, as we go over. So let's just start on the outside of the eye here. We'll bring this in. Now you'll notice or you might be able to notice anyway on the screen cast it's sometimes hard that it it's it's doing too much it's it's making it too bright but that's fine because again this is a non-destructive uh brush and it's something that we can adjust after the effect too uh, so that's nice as well so let's paint in a little bit here we're going to uh, just paint in around these eyes here and again maybe a little too bright so let's see what happens if we do our before and after here. So that's before, 
and that's after. So too bright. You can really tell when you get that before and after. We've kind of gone and um, made the raccoon eye effect on this particular model. So let's not do that. So instead, let's say, instead of 1.5, let's say 0.5. So here is the before, and here's the after. Okay, that's not too bad, a little, a little more subtle. Let's maybe add a little bit more here on the, the bridge of the nose and kind of bring that out a bit more. So we have a before and an after. Okay, not bad. Now, another thing you want to do too is when you hover over your mask again, it's going to show you where you've gone. And you'll notice in this case, okay, I look like I've gone into the white of the eye a bit there. So um, I, want to, I want to erase that out of there. Also, if you don't want to hover over to show the mask, you can click on show mask and that will allow you to, uh, to just keep the mask on as you work even. Another thing too is this little green box here. In this case, in my case, green. This, you change the color overlay of the mask. So if you don't like green or if you're working on something that has a, the same matte color as a mask or something close and you can't see the mask, well then you can go ahead and change it to any color that you want, red or blue, uh, whatever the case may be. So we'll, we'll stay with green. It kind of looks like she's got some nice green makeup on here. So let's take off the mask here. Actually, let's leave it on because I'm going to show you another tool here. Uh, the add, there's new add and erase so we're going to use the erase button here because we want to get rid of the little bit we've done down here now in the erase one we have feather but we don't have any density we have flow and that so uh, remember that it's you don't have a cap for the uh, for the eraser so I'll get in there and I'll just erase around the eyes make sure I don't have any kind of sitting in there there we are yeah it looks like I did have a bit of a little overspill there so I wasn't really too too careful so now let's take off the mask and another thing you can do if this pin is really bothering you there's this little button down here or you can use the V key as well and that will get rid of the pin and so we have our before and our after so it's very subtle if you go out to, to fit and view here you can probably see a little bit better there's a before and our after so just getting rid of a little bit of the shadow there in the eyes, not too bad. Now let's maybe say bring a little bit more highlights uh, into the hair if you want to do that. And uh, for this, we uh, let's zoom in a little bit closer here. So actually, let's just control and plus on the keyboards. Actually, fairly fairly easy. And let's bring it up to the hair here. Okay. So now instead of erase, of course we have the option to new or add. Now if I add, what's going to happen, I'll show the pins here again, is I'm going to be adding to all of these uh, changes in a different location. And sometimes you want to do that, but in the case of where you're working in a, in a totally different area uh, of the picture, you want to use a new one so that you can uh, edit these individually. So now we have new and we're going to do, let's go up to 1.5 exposure again so we can kind of see what we're doing. Uh, let's bring up, how's the size here? Okay, that's not too bad. Our flow is down, our density. Let's bring that down a little bit. We're just going to maybe paint in some highlights here into the hair. I want maybe a little bit more feather here. And we're just going to, yes, very roughly. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect. Let's bring up the size a little bit more. I'll do a little bit of a, there we are. Let's bring that down. The size of our brush a little bit lower. And we'll just kind of paint in some some hair highlights, so as if the uh, light is is catching our hair here. Okay. So we do a before and an after. Now you say, "Oh, that's that's too much." So let's go back to fit and view, and we'll do the same thing as we did last time. Let's get rid of those pins so they don't distract us here is we're going to take our exposure and we're going to take it down to 0.5 again. So now we have our before and our after. So now we have just a little uh, subtle lighting effect. Um, if we bring back those pins and we hover over it, we'll see exactly where we were. Okay, so now you see, now you see I've gone and done it. Uh, I've also put on her face. So here's where we can show the mask again. And we're just gonna zoom in here. And let's say about 200%. Here we are. I've gone and over, gone a little too far. 
going onto the face. So we just kind of take out our eraser and we're going to do that, get rid of that, and over here as well, and get rid of that. So it's really nice. You just use that eraser to kind of, it's almost like you're you're doing levels in Photoshop, if you're familiar with that, um, where you have levels and uh, you can kind of mask out different areas and uh, and get rid of other ones and, and bring some back here. So, so there we are. That's nice green highlights there. Um, so we'll want to get rid of our mask here so we can actually see what's going on. Let's get rid of our pins as well. So there's our before and there's our after. So when the first time you use the adjustment brushes and um, as you're using it, uh, you might have the the tendency, or New Year's have the tendency anyway, of kind of going overboard with the adjustment brush, using it too much, uh, and then getting a really kind of a weird HD effect or or just something that's really ugly. So you want to keep it subtle. Um, you want to be so it's like you can't really notice, okay, what did I do, until you take off the preview and then put it on again, and then you'll say, okay, that's what I've done. So you want it to be subtle. You don't want to go overboard. Um, if we wanted to, again, go in here and say we wanted to, I'll make a bigger brush here and we wanted to just bring some light into into this side of the face we can do that again just very subtle uh, changes um, you don't really want it to really stand out see there's just a very subtle on the side of the face there you know you can clean that up as you want but the adjustment brush is just really fun to work with because you can do so many great things to a photograph using it and again it's a non-destructive filter so if you don't like any of that for example if uh, let me show these pins again if that side piece i said okay you know what i didn't like that you just go on it click it's gone uh, and the same can be done with all of your highlights and uh, the picture itself uh, won't be won't be changed so very simple very nice tool to use just take it easy uh, don't overdo it on the adjustment brushes we're going to break down adjustment brush uh, series into a few parts here uh, because there's so much fun things you can do uh, for the photograph so the adjustment brush in adobe camera raw a very handy tool